weer theater aan het spuien in Den Haag. De Border session, Sessions, de uh, International Festival on Technology and Society. Met een nieuwe gast aangeschoven. Please tell me uh, what's your name and, and what do you do? <laughs> My name is uh, Jörg Blumdritt uh, and I'm the founder uh, of a company called Datarella. And what does Datarella do? <laughs> so, well, uh, uh, Datarella obviously deals with data, so we do this big data thing that everyone seems to do now. Um, But what do you do? Yeah, <laughs> Datarella um, uses data to um, to build predictive models on that. So we use uh, data that uh, occurs in in people's everyday lives, like uh, data collected from uh, from mobile phones, for example, and um, we use that to model what people did really and what people will do. Um, so it's building mathematical models based on people's behavior, basically. So it, it's it's a model to predict the future? Yes, you might say that. Most, most, uh, most of the time we deal with a very near future, like predicting what you will do in the next minute or so, like if you're driving a car, which brings us to the mobility uh, aspect of this uh, conference also. Um, if you're driving a car, so what will be the most likely thing that you want or that you are up to next, um, which might be, um, for example, uh, very important uh, if you think of um, autonomous vehicles, so to, to anticipate what people want to do. But it could also uh, lead further in the f uh, uh, further way in the future, so we do um, predictions based on research papers, on patterns that companies issue, and uh, we analyze um, trends that we see in these patterns, um, like for example, words that uh, occur for the first time in literature, mm -hmm. uh, or combinations of words that for the first time we see on the rise, and uh, figure out if there is a pattern behind that, if there is something moving, something is going on. And, and, and what's the use? It's always good to know what's up next, you know, <laughs> 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 that can prevent accidents, that can help people to understand uh, better what they are doing, um, that can help you, uh, uh, very straightforward, uh, breaking with uh, um, dangerous routines, for example, if you detect patterns in your life. Uh, and uh, uh, in, in, in terms of uh, analyzing um, abstract data like, like, like literature or, uh, or research papers or so, that, that really s tells you what your competition, for example, does. So you so can really kind of re-engineer what people do. And so we are kind of ag agnostic what kind of data we are using. Um, the, the, the models that we build uh, up on that uh, are all as always the same. So no matter if we have very short uh, foresight or uh, if it's more long range. Mm. Mm. The, the, the things you seem... Well, you, you seem to predict. They, well, when you when you talk you talk about uh, um, uh, movement, uh, so yeah. traffic. You talk about people. You talk about literature. It, it's it's a really broad spectrum. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's right. Shouldn't it's, uh, you focus? Focus is always the word. Is, yeah, this is this is what uh, <laughs> you always tell startups. Ah, you should have one product, yeah. and that will be easy to understand yeah. in an elevator and then you pitch can be the best thing. At this and I mean. I, I, I didn't uh, uh, I didn't choose a self-employed life uh, to be told what I have to do. You know, <laughs> this is exactly what brought me to okay, be okay. self-employed for the first thing. I mean, to start with, uh, that's I was always interested in, in what people do. Um, so I started my my professional life in academia in a research institute. Um, uh, that uh, uh, kind of deciphered people's behavior um, from a perspective of communication. So, uh, and I found that very interesting. That's, that's also a very broad field. I mean, you have nonverbal, for example, communication. You have the um, your language, but your language also has has nonverbal clues. You can you can quantize that. You can uh -huh. build models on that. So, what will happen next? So, what happens after the first uh, three seconds of, of a conversation, for example? What happens after the first 10 seconds and and so I learned how to um, to see these time series of events um, as something that you can kind of look into like like reading reading a text or so it's it's telling a story so we have data 
the data as such is not telling anything. I mean, it's just mm -hmm. numbers, more or less, so, or, or letters. So how, how would you interpret that? And, and, and first, you have to see there is events. Like, for example, someone makes a step. But what is a step? A step is a word, it's, it's a convention. So we have some, some kind of thing like a step in mind, but it's, it's, it's a very sub a subjective concept. So, so th th that's the first abstraction. And the next abstraction is, uh, in what context does this step happen? So is it in a room? Does someone uh, run, for example? Um, and and if, uh, if, uh, if she runs? Um, would that mean um, that's, that's training, that's sports, or is, is someone uh, running away or so? So these interpretations uh, uh, is kind of telling a story. Yeah. And it's, it's arbitrary in a way. So yeah. it's, it's like you choose the story that you tell. So, so it's not, really, not only very broad, the, the subject you're, you're, you're dealing with, but it's also rather philosophical. Yes, you could say it's a philosophical <laughs> thing. I mean, that makes it so, so interesting. So how do you make money? <laughs> <laughs> to be more practical. So we have <laughs> very big companies uh, that we work for. So we um, we have three kinds of products that we uh, we deliver. The first is these uh, predictive modelings. We have a prediction engine that's built. Uh, so we use Hadoop, if you have heard that. That's that's the kind of the windows for big data. So we, we use that. At, uh, companies. Uh, what sort just, of companies? Uh, well, for example, uh, we work for one of the big car manufacturers um, in Germany. We work for a big. Um, uh, hardware manufacturer that uh, uh, builds uh, microchips. We work for uh, big publishing houses. We and work what do they for want television. To know? Uh, for example, the television companies we work for, they want to know um, what ratings could they expect from um, from a, an episode of a series that they produce. Why, why do they want to know this beforehand? Because, uh, because they want to plan how much money they could spend um, uh, or uh, how much money they could charge the, the television stations from uh, uh -huh. uh, because they would then calculate the expected advertising revenues, which is based on the, uh, on the, on the audience yes. success of, of, uh, of a TV series. And this is the kind of... Uh, kind of models that we build. Yeah, so, so, it's, it's so you have to be really precise by, by these, uh, the outcome has we, to be We really try to be as precise as possible, yeah, of course. If, yeah, because if, if it's, well, three points lower than expected, then Well, of course, but, but the, the, I think the, um, the, the, the honest thing that you do is, um, as a statistician, uh, you provide range. Uh -huh. uh, yeah. you are, um, a method that we, uh, we often use is, uh, I have it on my t-shirt here, is the nearest neighbor method. So you, you look into the past and, and uh, look for specimens that you would find comparable uh, with the thing that you don't know yet. I would say, well, that might be similar to those I already knew. Uh -huh. And, and then people could decide themselves, uh, do they find uh, this decision plausible? Is that, that does it make sense? So that's the first product, is this predictive engine. The second is um, we generate the data to make these predictions on uh, with uh, mobile apps. So we use uh, smartphones. Smartphones produce lots of data. They have sensors built upon, like the gyroscope. So the smartphone, uh, if, if you turn the smartphone, uh, yeah that's tracked yeah. and uh, so the data tells a lot about me moving around, Whether me you, doing you things, walk yeah, or exactly. read or and then we build apps that, uh, uh, that uh, harvest that data and, and then we feed that into our prediction engine. And the third is, is like we do consultancy, so we work for mm -hmm. many companies as a consultant how to build these uh, big data infrastructures to, uh, well, to do the predictive things, to, to use data in a meaningful way for, mm -hmm. for these companies. Yeah. It's sometimes it's being said that big, da big data are uh, the answer for our future. <laughs> do you feel, the, do you feel uh, that? I don't think there's one answer for the future. I mean, <laughs> big data is, is an interesting thing. I mean, this is, um, I mean, like five years ago, that started from out of nowhere. So suddenly, it was there. It was, uh, Does it have anything to do with the future, big data? Because you can, because well, actually, because it has more to do with the past, actually, because yeah. the data, uh, uh -huh. the data is collected uh, by things that already happened. Uh -huh. I mean, yeah. that's 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 uh, so. Um, I mean, the future. It, it, there's. Uh, hopefully, I get that right. There's a, a very good quote by Malievich. Uh, the, uh, um, uh, suprematist artist uh, in, the, in the 1910, 1920 years, uh, Malievich said, um, so 
the, the present is not the future of the past, but the past of the future. <laughs> it's something like that. So it's, it's always the, uh, data that, that is collected in the past that makes somehow our present, but is not really telling about the future. The future is open, uh -huh. in a way. And, and we are moving just um, from, from one present to the next. And, uh, but uh, people always want to have some guidance. Uh, they, they want to hear a story. How, how should they decide? Yeah. You know, or how should they well, uh, act? Or, uh, I can imagine big data helping there. If, if you know that you move not enough, for example. Oh, well, yeah, in, in healthcare, that's a good, good point. Yeah. I mean, uh, um, but like, like Apple Health, for example, that counts your steps and, and you can always see, uh, and you can't switch that off. I mean, the, the, the iPhone always tracks your steps. Uh, <laughs> many people have Jawbone, up, uh, Fitbit, and all these tracking devices now. It's called the quantified self. Yeah. I've heard the term. Yeah. And, the, uh, and people start really trying to achieve goals, like uh, really doing 10,000 steps a day yeah. or so. So it does change the future then in... in, in yeah, actually, yeah, absolutely. I mean, people change the future by, by changing their behavior. That's, that's always true. And by knowing the data. And that's, uh, that's also an interesting thing. I mean, that, uh, um, there's a famous uh, cartoon, a Dilbert cartoon, uh, where the evil, um, the, the evil superior of Dilbert tells uh, Dilbert uh, how to, do, to deal with big data. But well, actually, it's uh, dehumanizing our customers by calling them data now. <laughs> uh, there is some truth in that. I mean, it's like you strip everything human away and uh, keep to the uh, to the, to the quantitative. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> what, what's left if you quantize yourself? Uh -huh. If you send your DNA to 23andMe and let that, that uh, DNA be in sequence and you strip everything away and, and, and keep to the numbers. Uh, that's, that's an interesting question. What's, what's left of people then? <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Is it a question you sometimes think about? When yeah, you, of course, yeah, yeah. We, yeah. Try, and we, we try to give answers on that also. I mean, it's like... I mean, the first, what, you, what you learn if you use big data instead of the classic small data of, of uh, social science... Uh, yeah, just talking uh, we, to people, interviewing uh, them. Or, or yeah. using yeah. surveys with questionnaires. So if you use uh, big data, you suddenly realize that um, aggregating people into what we used to call target groups um, doesn't make any sense anymore. So the concept of representing people, saying, for example, that's women and that's men. And if you see on the, uh, on the personal level by using big data, you suddenly see that doesn't make any sense. It, it's really not telling anymore. It's just an artifact. It's, it's, it's something arbitrary that we built because we didn't know better. And that's also, man, that's, that's kind of questions also the, the way we make decisions in a democracy mm. uh, that's that's the representation principle we have we have the constituency and the constituents elect one representative that's the person sent to parliament because you know in the old days we would regard a set of people living nearby as homogenous enough uh -huh. that it yeah, made yeah. sense to just pick one and and send them uh, but if you see every person by themselves, um, you suddenly realize um, they are not homogenous at all. No. And, and that's really something that, that becomes now visible and, and that at least my view on, on doing social science uh, is, is totally changed by that. So I hardly use words like women or men anymore, uh, at least uh, if, I, if I can, can, can avoid them because uh, there's, there's hardly any context apart from filling out uh, uh, forms to, to apply for, uh, for your passport or so where you mm. have to fill in these, these, yeah. these categories uh, where that makes any sense anymore in real life, I would say. Mm. So it's really a democratizing, democratizing uh, uh, process that goes on. So big data is good? Uh, I think it is. Uh, I mean... Um, if you if you compare um, living in societies nowadays with uh, when I was young, I can clearly remember how that felt. Uh, we live in in we have more clarity. I mean, what's what's the goal of of our political systems? I, I mean, we have two goals basically. We have to, the the liberal goal, um, so so make the um, 
the person as free as possible. But what does that really mean? Free freedom can be uh, the, the, do what they want. And the second thing is is the egalitarian principle. So um, smooth uh, uh, the the unjust uh, distribution of things and so on. And I think big data is is a good tool to um, to combine these these two really. Well, it's, it's, um, we, we normally presume these two, two goals like uh, liberty and, uh, and equality as, as uh, contradictive and, and they are not. Um, um, as, as long as you don't need to aggregate people into, into these big sets mm -hmm. and treat them like, like an aggregate of, of something. And if, if you can use data to, um, to, to make people keep to their, to their personal... Um, individuality and in the, in the same way still cooperate socially and share things I mean the sharing economy works only with big data so that's that's one use case that we already see that that flourishes and so I think that uh, uh, it's a good thing mainly yeah. what's what's the thing you learned in the data you you've mined around <laughs> around <laughs> the oh, world yeah. and what, what made you really happy well, um, so first, what I learned, as yeah. was already, uh, already uh, uh, no, I mean, uh, that was kind of a shock, is that there is no privacy. You can't keep, as, as in, in the moment that we, we start moving around in a modern city like, like The Hague or so, uh, we, we leave data traces all, all over the place. And uh, the data is so rich, it's so telling about ourselves that you can't anonymize that anymore. Mm -hmm. So so. It, it's really like um, everyone is visible all the time. Like, like moving, like, like if you walk uh, through a small village and everyone sees you more moving yeah, around yeah, and everyone yeah. knows who you are. That, that's the same feeling. The stranger in that's, town. That's, that's, that's yeah, the, yeah. The, yeah. It has advantages and it's also um, very, very chilling uh -huh, anyway. Yeah. So that, that's the most interesting thing I would say. That that really and and the second uh, what I what I find so fascinating is is using the sensory data from mobile phones but also other uh, Internet of Things other other uh, mm -hmm. uh, connected devices and uh, see um, how telling the data is and, and tell this this kind of data story about people's life that that's really something I really love to do <laughs> yeah 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 but the privacy is a thing we should be aware of and 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 be careful with. I mean, it's privacy and informational self-determination. It's even even more important that I that I I mean, for example, when I Twitter or, or I post things on Facebook, I want others to read that. I yeah, mean, it's yeah. it's I, I yeah. publish things, um, and and and, and now I'm talking to, to you. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So uh, actually, it's not it's not privacy that uh, uh, that I want for the things that I post. I don't want my my openness to be misused, to be used against me. And it's even more important with medical data. People who choose to make public their, their medical data, that's a very bold step. I mean, it's, it's, it's a benign thing for society. Uh, so we should encourage people to publish, uh, to publish their, their medical data because we, we learn so, much thing, so many things from that. But at the same time, um, we should really prevent this data from being misused. So mm -hmm. we, we, we need regulations uh, and that has to be the authorities. We need governmental regulations uh, to prevent this data to be used against uh, the openness of people. So if people publish their data and and uh, for example an insurance company will say well I won't insure you because I see a potential risk in that data that's that kind of, of misuse that we have to prevent through regulations yeah yeah but that's a very clear example do you feel that governments are aware enough um, I see that we have very good discussions on the European level already um, and we have these discussions in in some societies, like there's a very good discussion about that in Switzerland going on. So, for example, uh, the city of Zurich, they have a, a brilliant open data project. So people are discussing that mm -hmm. on the on the municipal level. I see that also in the Netherlands. I mean, uh, many people are uh, are very well aware of, of things going on here. They have that in Scandinavia. I don't see that in the big markets yet. Uh, I mean, in the UK, France, and Germany, some people are aware. Mostly, that's but that's still driven by classic uh, uh, policy making or so that, that that's not yet where it should be 
but uh, but I see also uh, uh, the big uh, joint industry committees also moving in that direction. So yeah. I'm quite, and we have things like the self-driving cars uh, that really brings the discussion on the table. No one can avoid that discussion mm -hmm. anymore if we have things so intrusive yeah. like a self-driving car. Yeah, yeah. So the future looks bright. It it does. I think it it uh, it's really. I mean, many things, many talks here on this conference deal with the the. The opportunities of the future without being just techno deterministic, mm -hmm. and that's that's really what makes the future bright. It's, it's it's a political and ethical discussion that we have in conferences like here, and and I feel that it, this is something that that was lacking ten years ago, and and I see that now, and, and that makes the future bright for me at least. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, tot zover. Blijf kijken. Straks nog een laatste gast.